What's up, everybody? We are back. John Della Rose here, the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction, coming at you with another epic collection review. This is Punisher Volume 2, which uh, takes place from 86 to 89 and covers the Punisher miniseries from 86 and the Punisher ongoing series, which started in 1987, uh, and a, uh, a crossover issue with that, and then the Marvel graphic novel uh, Punisher Assassin's Guild. Now this is volume two, but volume one, um, we can figure, glean the contents of because uh, there is an omnibus called Back to War and it contains most everything in here, if not everything in here, plus a bunch of Spider-Man issues and a couple of Daredevil issues from the 70s and 80s. And that's where start, it starts because Punisher was a Spider-Man villain and he uh, existed as that for a long time. And this is really where he comes into his own as a character and uh, really becomes the anti-hero hero that we all know today. Um, it's written by Stephen Grant, Joe Duffy, Mike Barron, and Anne Nocenti. Is that how you pronounce that? Pencilers Mike, Zach, and a bunch of others. Uh, Zach is, is probably the principal person here, I believe. Is that right? Oh, for at least for this uh, first miniseries. Stephen Grant does a pretty standard, what, you know, I mean, I guess it wasn't standard back then since this is the first one, but what would be a pretty standard Punisher miniseries where Frank Castle is in jail. There's a group that, uh, you know, wants to spring him, and so they, there's a jailbreak. Castle eventually gets out, and he uh, gets offered a position by this group called The Trust, who wants him to uh, basically uh, kill bad guys for them. So, and he says, all right. So very similar, very, uh, very uh, standard first issue. And then the next issue starts out where he's working for the trust. So it skips a little bit of time. Uh, he is on an assassination job and it looks like he's killing the kingpin. Uh, he didn't really kill the kingpin, but he acts like he did and, and others act like he did. And we have the Punisher and uh, this gal, kind of seduces him at the beginning. She's really uh, with this guy who's a part of the trust. And uh, Punisher just gets involved in these gang wars from, from this uh, point forward in the miniseries. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm so used to like Garth Ennis's Punisher where it was like a lot darker, um, you know, a lot, a lot lot brighter colors here. Even though the content's about just as, about as dark, to be honest. Um, and he eventually doesn't like their methods, and so what happens is uh, they make their own Punisher people who go around and kill people as the Punisher, and uh, and then Frank Castle fights with them. Now, there's a very weird uh, thing with this miniseries here. Um, it says on a few of these, like issue number two says it's a five issue miniseries, but it looks like there was a, um, a misprint or something like that, number three and a four issue miniseries. Oops. Um, uh, it is definitely a five-issue miniseries, even though it says four-issue miniseries on that cover. And, uh, you know, very consistent. It's a miniseries with the same uh, art all the way through. You know, it's, it's pretty standard Marvel House 80s Fair art. Um, uh, I thought it was fine. Uh, very odd that, that Jigsaw was in this. So Jigsaw is uh, a, a Daredevil villain. And he's, he's uh, always got a problem in this issue that if my face has to be cut up, yours does too, Punisher. Um, and even though he's listed as a supervillain, I, I find it very interesting. There's like real no extra superpowers going on in this uh, as it occurs. So Punisher eventually breaks into the compound of uh, the uh, trust people and... Uh, finishes them off, and uh, that's that. So, very nice miniseries, it was fun. Um, you know, not a ton to it. Uh, you don't really set much up in terms of uh, a supporting cast for the Punisher or anything like that. He's definitely doing the just like stoic, angry, I'm gonna fight sort of thing, which continues into Mike Barron's run right here. Um, now, Mike Barron got the first uh, of the Punisher ongoing series, and he, had different art here, but this art is a little more jagged, just feels a little darker, I guess, because the, because the, the line work's not as crisp here. So we see this compared to like this, the line work's very crisp. And 
uh, it fits better, I think. Uh, the, the color the color palette tends to be a little darker uh, in here too. It's Klaus Janssen, here we are. And he does um, he does almost all of the, the book here, which is, is pretty good. Carl Potts, who did some Punisher work later, is the editor here. And uh, it just starts out with the Punisher uh, taking down some drug folk and uh, rather than mob, I guess it's drug folk, kind of similar. Um, really, I, I, I love these like colored panels like that. Looks good. And then eventually it goes down to Bolivia. There is some backstory in this, which is pretty neat, which Baron does. Uh, and, and the Punisher, of course, uh, came out of Vietnam and he meets up with some unit guys and that's how he gets involved with this because one of his guys from his former unit is gonna be piloting uh, some sort of drug shipments uh, and has to go down to Nam. It turns out he, uh, Punisher recognizes the general down there. The general does, obviously doesn't like him. And uh, he takes things. Uh, Punisher eventually just kills everybody because he's the Punisher. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, pretty standard of what you'd expect from the Punisher, but it, it worked pretty well. Uh, we get back uh, to the city this time. Is this the city? Is he in the city or is he on the run outside of the city this time? Um... Oh yeah, so he's uh, he's uh, kind of heading to middle America because he thinks that um, that he wanted uh, you know a more peaceful life. And it turns out there's no peaceful life here. And he meets up. This one's a little bit cringy. He meets up uh, th this like white supremacist group who's like, you know, basically stealing banks, stealing from banks because banks are controlled by the Jews. And, uh, and very cringy villains in here that, you know, make you kind of roll your eyes a little bit. Um, and it's another two issue, uh, no it's not, it's just, that was a one issue deal at least. So you didn't have to go through two issues of that. Um, we get back to New York finally and we meet uh, the Punisher's suppliers. He's got this guy, Microchip, who's like helping him out. And uh, Microchip's got like this uh, guy he calls Junior, who's a little bit of a, uh, um, I guess a, a little, little roguish and, uh, and doesn't really follow orders super well throughout this whole deal. And what are they doing back here? Um, he ends up meeting this like weird church thing, which is not a church. The guy doesn't actually believe in God as it turns out. Um, and uh, it's more like a cult. And the Punisher gets involved in this cult. And this is a two issue deal. Becomes this guy's right hand man, tells him what he wants to hear and all that. Um, and uh, then eventually he gets surprise, surprise, kills everybody in the cult. But again, I, I do like the art through this. Mike Barron's pacing's brilliant. This is just wonderful action all the way through here. Hard to put down. You just wanna, you just wanna finish off reading this. And then uh, he comes back and uh, there's these terrorists who are going to, uh, they wanna set off a nuke. And so Punisher infiltrates that and ends up in the middle of a mob war between these two groups. And kills everybody. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, on this one, uh, this is a pretty neat uh, one where uh, storyline. This is probably the best storyline in here. And, and we change artists here. We change artists. We might have done that in the last story. Um, maybe we didn't. Uh, but you can tell. Uh, I, I don't like the the faces, faces that uh, Wells Wells Potasio does quite as much as I did in the one prior, but it fits fine. Um, and at least they kind of kept the color palette the same, so it, it flows pretty well. But basically, there's this guy, um, and he is a uh, Wall Street guy, and he's going around serial killing people because he's crazy, and he's got backers from Japan who are these, like, you know, uh, really into insider trading, hence the title. And the Punisher kind of inserts himself in there. Now, there's a big problem in this issue, spoiler, that uh, Microchip, the guy who's uh, made, building Punisher's van and all that, loses his uh, junior through this because junior just does not um, stay put. And he goes back and uh, puts himself in the line of fire and it causes a problem. 
So uh, there's that. Punisher has a victory here, uh, but he loses Junior, and they also lost this like sort of bum informant who was helping him out uh, because Punisher was too focused on the big picture and not focused enough on the on the street level. So he uh, he he refocuses himself. It was a really really good uh, storyline. Uh, might be the best one in the book. And this one, uh, Daredevil is here, and uh, these people are taking pills and dying of cyanide poisoning. And it turns out there's a disgruntled employee of the uh, factory here. Look, look at the beefcake. <laughs> and uh, I guess they just had to show how, how badass he was since uh, there's not a lot of action up front here. And uh, people are just getting killed from this. The Punisher gets involved. Daredevil shows up. They kind of have a, like, you know, you're just as bad as, as them, Punisher, like, sort of fight and uh, lose the purpose for a little bit, and Punisher eventually uh, takes him down. Then we get to uh, a Daredevil issue, um, and this Daredevil issue uh, kind of recaps events, but mm, I, I, you want they bill it from Daredevil's perspective, but it's really not from his perspective. You see the difference in the art uh, of the bad guy here. Uh, he almost doesn't look quite like the same person. Didn't coordinate that all that well. And uh, Typhoid Mary is, uh, I guess, returning. I, did, I guess she was gone for a bit. I, I don't know what was happening in Daredevil at this time. Uh, so, there, so the Punisher Daredevil plot ends uh, here before uh, everything else goes on. Look at the lack of background on this page. It's like they really rushed these fight scenes and they don't look dynamic at all. Um, I really look at Daredevil punching past the Punisher here. Just looks very awkward. Punisher looks very stiff and big. Uh, definitely not as good art as they had on the Punisher book at this time. Um, and we get a little few more pages of uh, Matt Murdock uh, being seduced by Typo Mary's alt, alt, alter ego. So I bet that's an interesting storyline, but I'm a little lost as to what's going on. I was just interested in how this one story went, uh, since that's how it's collected in here. I don't, I don't know that it was necessary to collect that in here, uh, since, you know, I mean, I guess it did crossover sorta, but it didn't really add anything on the Punisher front, um, but it was kind of nice to see. All right, now Assassin's Guild by Joe Duffy and Jorge Zafino. All right, um, now this has like really interesting, cool 80s dark uh, art and colors uh, that like have this like realistic bent to it. Uh, there's this Assassin's Guild running out of a Chinese restaurant, and uh, there's a gal uh, working for them, and they get tangled up with the Punisher, and uh, they they learn that one of the, the Punisher learns that one of their marks is you know a really bad person, really bad person, um, and those people are basically that guy is basically running an outfit that you know, look at this cool black and white scene where the Punishers were counting his past. Uh, that very nicely done flashback right here. Um, the, the Punisher is uh, recounting... Uh, where'd, I, where'd I go? Um, I lost my train of thought. Um, the bad guy is preying upon people who need help and then you know sucking them into his organization so that they're working for him and runs a, like a protection racket around people. And so this Assassin's Guild is going to track him down. The Punisher has to deal with... Well, gosh, there's this Assassin's Guild operating... And I gotta shut them down too, but I'm gonna shut them down. Uh, and some really nice, this is the gal who, uh, I wish I'd see more of her in the Marvel Universe. She was awesome. But she's a part of um, uh, the Assassin's Guild and helps the Punisher. She's got this uh, young boy she's training named, named Masumi, and uh, he sacrifices himself for the job. Really touching moment. Um, and, uh, oh, her name is Reiko, that's right. Um, and, uh, Punisher realizes, you know what, uh, if there's an Assassin's Guild there, I don't know anything about it, and he just leaves them be. And we see somebody actually putting a uh, hit out on the Punisher at the end, and they tell uh, him no. So you kind of see that they resolve that they're going to, um, you know, live and let live. I'd love to see more of that Assassin's Guild. I think that's a pretty neat thing. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll write an Assassin's Guild story. Who knows? Um, but... Yeah, I love the art style in this. I thought it was a lot of fun. Really cool for the graphic novel. Um, you know, really like the way Reiko's done. Um, she looks like a real person. And um, just enjoyable all the way around. Joe Duffy wrote a heck of a book. I, I would like to see this made into 
a uh, miniseries or a movie or something like that. This was excellent. So that's it overall. Um, uh, the first miniseries was probably the weakest of all of it. Um, that one I issue of uh, Mike Barron's, you know, I, I wasn't super into, but the rest of it flowed very nicely. Um, and the Daredevil issue, meh, didn't, didn't quite flow again with it. it just too, too much of a change in tone for the same, uh, same book. But uh, overall, the, uh, Mike Barron's uh, plot line was great. I love the setup with Microchip. I love everything Punisher's doing in there. Very interesting character. Um, and the graphic novel was absolutely phenomenal. So uh, can't wait to read volume three where it just continues uh, right where this left off and uh, see where it goes from here. I've never been a huge Punisher fan, to be honest, but, uh, but this uh, made me more interested in him. We'll call this one a seven and a half out of 10 overall. Uh, for an epic, so uh, definitely worth picking up. And this, even though it's called number two, for all intents and purposes, this is the first Punisher volume. The other one's gonna be some Spider-Man tales that just feature him as a villain. So a uh, good place to start. And volume three is out, and volume five just came out as of this recording. So uh, they've got, got a good, good plethora of stuff. Um, I might wait for volume four to come out before getting to volume five. I might do it in succession. Just depends on how fast I read these. All right, guys, hit that like and subscribe button. Let me know what you think about The Punisher, this run, Mike Barron, Joe Duffy, uh, any of the art inside, and I will talk to you guys soon.